library friends, it's Miss Tree coming to you from the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library located in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today we are going to be celebrating books. But we're also going to be taking a look at how those books got changed into movies. But in my opinion, the book is always better. So, to give you a sense of how our sensory story time all about Tinseltown is going to be structured today, we are going to start out by doing a little bit of Did You Know? where we are going to talk about some books that were turned into movies. But remember, the book is always better. After we talk about some books and movies, we are going to read one of these books that was turned into a movie. Once we do our book, we are going to do a flannel activity where we are going to take a trip to a movie theater. After we take our trip to the movie theater, it's going to be time to share another book that was turned into a movie. Once we share our book, we are going to do a little bit more Did You Know? All about Hollywood, California, and some famous locations that are there. Once we talk about those famous locations, I am going to show you an activity or two that you can do based on those locations. It's going to work. Trust me. All you'll need are a couple sheets of plain white paper, a pencil, some markers or crayons, and you are going to get to be a star. Because today, like it is in Hollywood, a star is born. And so, that gets us back to the beginning, where we're going to do a little bit of Did You Know? Now, did you know that there are a lot of movies you may have seen that were actually based on books? I have a bunch of them here behind me, but I also have one on my lap and actually on my shirt because this is one of my all-time favorite books that was actually turned into one of my all-time favorite movies, oddly enough. And that book is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And this book was published in 1866. Well, many years later, a gentleman by the name of Walt Disney read this book, and he thought, you know, I bet that would make a great movie. And so, in September of 1951, he released Alice in Wonderland, and that was one of Disney's animated movies. But that is not the only movie to ever have come out that was based on a book. In fact, there were many others, so we're going to, did you know, find out about a few of those. And so, let me start over here. The first one we're going to talk about is a book called Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell, and the book she wrote came out in 1936. Well, about three years later, a movie was made, and it's a great epic movie, and this came out in 1939. This movie won 10 awards. 
including eight Oscars, and so far it has earned six billion dollars worldwide. And then here's one you may be a little more familiar with. Have any of you ever read The 101 Dalmatians by Dodie Smith? This book came out in 1956. And this one was another one that Mr. Walt Disney ran across and thought, you know, I bet that would make a great movie. And so, in 1961, he released 101 Dalmatians. And this movie has earned $1.6 billion world worldwide. Now, this is a classic book. In 1894, Rudyard Kipling released The Jungle Book. And Mr. Walt Disney read that book. And in 1967, he released the movie The Jungle Book, which has earned $1.4 billion worldwide. But last but not least, and I can almost guarantee you all know this one, have read it, and have seen the movie. In 1997, Miss J.K. Rowling released Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And several years later, in 2001, the movie came out, and it has made $1.25 billion worldwide. But what do these have in common? All of these movies started out as books. And so, that leaves me to our next activity. We are going to share a book that had a movie based on it. And the book we're going to share is this one right here. This is Madeline by Ludwig Bemelmans and it was released in 1939. And then, in July of 1998, many, many years later, a movie version of Madeline came out. But, like I said, the book is always better. So we are going to share Madeline by Ludwig Bemelmans. And this was published by Puffin Books a division of Penguin Group in 1998. And so, Madeline. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines they broke their bread. and brushed their teeth and went to bed.
They smiled at the good and frowned at the bad. And sometimes they were very sad. They left the house at half past nine in two straight lines. In rain or shine. The smallest one was Madeline. She was not afraid of mice. She loved winter, snow, and ice. To the tiger in the zoo, Madeline just said, Who, who? And nobody knew so well how to frighten Miss Clavel. In the middle of one night, Miss Clavel turned on her light and said, Something is not right. Little Madeline sat in bed, cried and cried. Her eyes were red. And soon after Dr. Cone came, he rushed out to the phone. And he dialed D-A-N-10-6. Nurse, he said, it's an appendix. Everybody had to cry. Not a single eye was dry. Madeline was in his arm in a blanket, safe and warm. In a car with a red light, they drove out into the night. Madeline woke up two hours later in a room with flowers. Madeline soon ate and drank. On her bed there was a crank. And a crack on the ceiling had the habit of sometimes looking like a rabbit. Outside were birds, trees, and sky, and so ten days passed quickly by. One nice morning, Miss Clavel said, Isn't this a fine day to visit Madeline? Visitors from two to four read a sign outside her door. Tiptoeing with solemn face with some flowers and a vase. In they walked 
and then said, ah, when they saw the toys and candy and the dollhouse from Papa. But the biggest surprise by far on her stomach was a scar. Goodbye, they said. We'll come again. And all the little girls left in the rain. They went home and broke their bread, brushed their teeth, and went to bed. In the middle of the night, Miss Clavel turned on the light and said, Something is not right. And afraid of a disaster. Miss Clavel ran fast and faster. She said, please, children, do tell me what is troubling you. And all the little girls cried, Boo-hoo! We want to have our appendix out, too. Good night, little girls. Thank you so, you are well. And now go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the light and closed the door. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. And that is the end of Madeline by Ludwig Bemelman. And so that was our book that we shared, which now means it's time for our flannel activity. And if you remember, I mentioned that our flannel activity was going to be a chance for us to go to the movies. So are you ready to come along with me? I'm ready. Let's go to the movies and see what we see. I am taking five dollars along with me to see the movie. I have to buy one ticket for me. A movie ticket will cost a dollar, you see. So there's my movie ticket. My mom is coming too, so I buy a ticket for her. One plus one adds up to two. Now, hmm, I need a treat before the show starts. A bucket of popcorn. Some Skittles. And a drink. One plus one plus one equals three. Five dollars I spent to see a great show. Two dollars for tickets. And three dollars for treats. Now Mom and I are ready to take our seats. And are you guys ready to take your seat too? Now that we've traveled to the movie theater, 
because now that we did our flannel activity, it means it's time for another book that was turned into a movie. And that book that we are going to talk about is this one right here. It's Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. And it was published by HarperCollins Publishing in 1963. But then, in October of 2009, a movie version of Where the Wild Things came out. But this book, or this movie, was based on this book. And so we are going to share the book. Because remember what I said? The book is always better. And so, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. His mother called him Wild Thing and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. and grew. And grew until the ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max, and he sailed off through night and day. And in and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. and made him the king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start.
Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around, from far away, across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, No. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. And that is the end of Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. Published by Harper Collins in 1963. And so, in my opinion, the book is better. All right, so we have done our book, which now means it is time for. A little bit more, did you know, all about a famous place or two in Hollywood, California. Are you ready to visit Hollywood with me? All right, let's go. And where we are going is to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The Hollywood Walk of Fame spans 15 blocks of Hollywood Boulevard, and there are 2,700 stars on there. Now you may be wondering, what do those stars stand for? Well, those stars are given to famous actors, actresses, production people, musicians to commemorate their talent and over 10 million tourists visit the Hollywood Walk of Fame every year. In fact, you may remember when we started, we talked about the movie Gone with the Wind and in fact the female star from Gone with the Wind her name is Vivian Lee. She has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And you can see there in the center a movie camera to indicate that she was a film actress. Well, also located in Hollywood is another famous location. And this one is Grammont's Theater, and it was built in 1927. In 1977, the original Star Wars movie premiered there, and then in 2013, it was turned into an IMAX theater. 
and it is located on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Now, what makes this theater so special is that in the courtyard for this theater, kind of like our stars on Hollywood Boulevard, stars have been commemorated. And the way they've done this is by putting their handprints and footprints in cement. And if you see right there, those are actually the handprints hand and footprints of the cast of one of the movies we talked about, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So they have been commemorated in the courtyard to the theater. Which leads me to our next activity, where we are going to share an activity that you can do at home based on the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame or the footprints in the courtyard of the theater. And so, like I said, all you need is a pencil, some crayons, and some markers maybe, and you can make your very own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And if you see, mine has a book in the center, and it says, I love books and I put my name on it. So that's one activity you can do. The other activity you can do is based on the handprints and footprints in the theater's courtyard. Because if you have a paper, a pencil, some crayons and markers, and your hands, or your feet, you can make your own handprints. All you do is trace your hand, and then I colored mine all fancy colors, and I signed it, and that is how I commemorated my trip to Hollywood. And so you can do that too, and make yourself a star because we are all famous in our own right just like the book characters we read about today and the movies based on them so thank you so much for spending time with me today library friends if you want to learn more about books that were turned into movies and read some more of those fun books or watch some more of those fun movies or check out any of the content that the library makes available, both in materials or in digital streaming content. If you have a Charlotte Mecklenburg Library card or are a CMS student and have a one access number, you can visit the library's catalog and read more books and have more fun experiences. So thank you all very much for joining me today. And Go out there and be a star. Goodbye, library friends. Till next time.